Uh, hello, this is Tim. I recently got done watching Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Um, I actually like that name, uh, Season of the Witch. Uh, it's a decent name. Uh, they went through an anthology style this time with no reference to Michael Myers other than the fact that Halloween's playing on TV. Um, which I actually do prefer. The story of Michael Myers is wrapped up in the second movie. There's no reason to continue with the character. But uh, actually, this film is still not good. It's a low two-star film. This is not a good movie. The main character in the film, Dr. Childs, I believe is his name, played by Tom Atkins, is like a womanizing asshole. He's uh, very hateable, but at the same time, I liked him because he made me laugh because he tries to fuck every woman he runs into. And he's divorced from his wife in the film, and his wife, he's played by the same woman who played Annie in the first uh, Halloween film. And uh, you get the idea that he's cheated on her multiple times, and that's the reason that they divorced. And I don't blame her for divorcing him then. His character is just hateable. You don't give a shit what happens to him because he's a womanizing douchebag. But anyway, to get jump into the story of the film here, uh, this film has got robots mixed with witches. This is one of the films that's like so goofy and <laughs> but such a goofy B movie that the badness of it is actually fun to watch, <laughs> especially with the womanizing Tom Atkins in it. Uh, jump into the story here. You got a guy who comes into the story. He's clutching a mask in his hand. He's getting chased by androids. Um, he rams the car into one, makes it to a gas station. The guy uh, takes him to the hospital. He's there clutching the mask. Uh, Tom Atkins is there. Um, Tom Atkins, uh, he gives Tom Atkins the mask, I believe. Um, and then uh, later on that night, a fucking android comes in. And you get a pretty decent death scene here. This is one thing I like. You get a death scene here that's pretty cool. Where the robot like fucking puts his uh, fingers like on the guy's face like right here. And pulls it up. And, well, pushes it in and then pulls it back out like he crushes the front part of his skull, I believe, and kills him, which is a pretty cool death scene. It's graphic and good makeup effects. So he's dead, and then the android just walks outside. Tom Atkins follows him, and he fucking <laughs> sets himself on fire, and the kamikaze move outside his vehicle and burns to nothing. Um, there's a, <laughs> and you, oh, before that, you get uh, Tom Atkins flirting with a woman there at the hospital, and then you get another scene where this woman is like, who he knows, is like looking through the ashes and leftovers or whatever of the guy that was burned up in the vehicle and he's flirting with her <laughs> and getting her to find stuff for him you get a scene where he goes to visit his kids and his wife and he's telling her that he'll uh, he'll uh, watch them on the weekend they can come stay with him on the weekend his kids can and in the next scene you get uh, this woman who was the daughter of the guy that uh, was killed by the android shows up and she's real young she looks like she's in her early 20s and uh, Tom Atkins is, is like 40 looks like he's like in his 40s in this movie <laughs> And Tom Atkins, automatically, when he sees her, he's like, I want to fuck that. I mean, that's automatically the look on his face, like, I want to fuck that. He doesn't even care about what's happening to her father or anything. He just wants to screw her. That's all, all the reason he decides to help her. Because uh, there's a scene where um, she's wanting him to figure out what happened to her dad and everything. And Tom Atkins goes with her. And he just takes, uh, she's looking down. And he, he's looking at her in the face. And she raises up and he's looking directly at her. And the next scene is him buying, and the next scene is, uh, well, uh, is him saying, I'm gonna go with you. Let's, uh, let's go investigate this and go to the place where the masks were made. That uh, well, since her father had a mask, they want to go to the place where they were manufactured. And the next scene is like, uh, him calling his wife saying, sorry, the kids can't stay with me. I gotta go. And he's got like beer and he's gonna take it with him. And you can tell right there he plans on fucking her. <laughs> he plans on trying to. And I'm like, what? This guy don't even give a shit about his own kids. Why do we give a fuck about this guy? But at the same time, I can't help but laugh my ass off. I love it and hate it at the same time. So he leaves with her. They go to some kind of fucking Irish town or something like that. And the guy that runs the factory is a guy named Colonel Cochran. It's the dude from Robocop who ran OCP Communications, the company, the old man on there. So every time I see him, I keep I keep thinking he's like, we, we don't just make uh, we don't just make uh, uh, Robocops. We fucking uh, out here at OCP, we make androids, killer masks, and bionic dildos <laughs> or bionic dicks. And I'm like, <laughs> I just can't help but think that when I see him, something stupid like that. But um. Anyway, in the film, the masks that he makes are like, he somehow stole Stonehenge somehow. It never explains it in the movie. He's talking to Tom Atkins later, and he's like, never believe how we got Stonehenge, and he never explains it. So I'm like, I'm not, at first I'm like, I don't believe it. How did you get here? And he never explains it. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I thought that was stupid, but funny again. Um, so uh, he takes like pieces of Stonehenge, chips of it for some reason. The little pieces of Stonehenge have magical powers. And he puts them inside of the microchips in the mask, and they fucking cause your head to explode if you wear it or 
I'd be wearing on Halloween while this little annoying fucking jingle is playing that plays all through the movie. Six more days to Halloween, and it just keeps saying it over and over and bobbing like that with a fucking... Well, it's got like a pumpkin on the screen that's like flashes like that. And if you're seizure prone, you'll probably die after watching this movie. Um, uh, But uh, when you watch it with one of those masks on, you start like oozing creatures and snakes at your face and you fall over dead. So he plans on like making a sacrifice of children on Halloween for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> but um, it's interesting in a way. I mean, it's an interesting idea. And he never really explains why he does it. He mentions that the planets aligned for it. Well, I just gotta do it. <laughs> He's like, okay, what the fuck ever. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, so yeah, he wants to sacrifice people using these masks for some unknown reason. And I guess he just into that shit and he doesn't explain it. Um, uh, so they go there to the town to try to get into the mask factory and figure out what's going on and all that shit. And then when they're in there in the town, everybody's like, Colonel Cochran, he's a great fella, that Cochran. <laughs> he's like overly chipper. And uh, there's another family there who's like really annoying looking suburban people. And the androids in this film are like dressed up in like business yuppie looking outfits. So it's like <laughs> completely different than Michael Myers. When I first watched this film for the first time, I hated it when I was a kid because I was like, Halloween 3, never seen this one. I watched it the whole time, I was like, hey, where the fuck's Michael Myers? And, but anyway, now that I'm older and I understand what it was and everything, I'm more okay with it. But the film still isn't that good. It's borderline sucking, just about it. Uh, there's a family there as well, who uh, is uh, the father, like, uh, sells the masks for uh, cocksucker, I mean Cochran. <laughs> but, um, there's another woman there who uh, sells masks too, I believe, or is planning on it. And, uh, she goes, she's staying at the hotel, and Tom Atkins and, uh, uh the, that guy's daughter, they, they meet, and, well, I mean, who he... He wants to fuck her at the hotel is what I'm trying to say. So he's like, let's, let's uh, pose his husband and wife at this hotel. She's like, oh, okay. And they get in there. This dude's like in his 40s, right? Tom Atkins is. And she's like in her 20s. And they get in there and he's like, why not sleep in the car? And she's like, where do you want to sleep? And he's like, that's a stupid question. And then all at once, fucking bam, just fucking. <laughs> I'm like, really? Seriously? I'm Tom Atkins, you ain't bad looking for a guy your age. But I... <laughs> You must have a real big dick or something, or that mustache you got in this movie is just rocking because you're getting laid left and right, bro. <laughs> he's flirting with every woman in the movie, and he's fucking them all. So uh, <laughs> he's doing something right. But anyway, so uh, he's fucking her, and uh, he wake, he decides to take a stroll. He goes out there. Some old wino is talking about how he's going to burn down Cochran's factory. The old wino uh, is talking to Tom Atkins about it, and the old, uh, old wino leaves. Uh, Tom Atkins heads back to the hotel. The old wino gets ambushed by androids. Then you get a pretty cool death scene here, too, where he gets his whole fucking head ripped off by an android, which I'm like, shit. <laughs> then you get a scene where the uh, the woman who's there to get masks to sell him is, like, fucking tampering with one of the masks. And uh, it houses the misfire. And whenever some, whenever these uh, when misfires, the fucking laser light shoots directly into her mouth. And it's pretty decent makeup effects here. And the way she dies is, like, bugs and stuff coming out of her mouth. There's good stuff in this movie, like good fun B-movie stuff. But all the good stuff is hurt by a weak plot and just stupid shit and worthless characters like Tom Atkins who you can't really root for because he's a guy who probably cheated on his wife multiple times and is trying to fuck every woman in the movie. As a matter of fact, right after he fucks the, <laughs> that guy's daughter in the movie, the woman that you think he likes, he gets on the phone and is talking to that woman who's been searching through that guy's ashes and shit and enjoys ashes and he's talking to her and he's like, <laughs> she's like, I'm going to take you, you owe me dinner when you get back and he's like, oh yeah. And I'm like, whatever, whatever. But anyway, so uh, they need uh, they have a misfire. Uh, that woman has a misfire. She gets killed. Decent makeup effects and everything. They wake up the next morning. Uh, her body's being took out of there to the factory somehow. He, for some reason, Cochran, they, Cochran tells him he's got a fucking like a hospital fa hospital ward or something like that in his factory. And the guy who runs the hotel is like talking to Tom Atkins. He's like. Don't worry, she'd be under the best of care with Mr. Cochran. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> but anyway. And uh, he just, uh, uh, cocksucker, uh, again, I mean Cochran. No, well, cocksucker, I'll just call him cocksucker because he's a cocksucker in the movie. So cocksucker, head of OCP, <laughs> decides to uh, give the family there a tour of the place. They head there. Uh, Tom Atkins and uh, his fuck buddy decide to go there. 
So Tom Atkins and her are there. And uh, he's giving the uh, cocksuckers, giving the, the family a tour of the, uh, the place, and they want to know how the masks are made stuff. He's like, trade secret. <laughs> uh, he gives the family a tour, a uh, tour and everything. Um, uh, Tom Atkins, uh, the woman sees her father's car there, and uh, she starts going over there, and she gets blocked off by androids, and right there, the uh, cocksucker knows that they're not to be trusted. <laughs> so later that night, they head out of there. Um, Cocksuckers androids ambush him. Well, uh, Tom Atkins just leaves her there so he can go make a phone call while she's in there. Uh, the cocksuckers androids ambush him. Um, well, ambush her. He comes back. She's gone. The androids try to get him. He makes it out the back window. He manages to make it to the factory looking for her. They got her held there. He gets in the fight with the android, punches his fucking fist through, the, through its gut, and like rips out wires and yell shit. And I'm like, they must not have very sturdy textured bodies or something because they're pretty weak that you can just punch through your guts but uh anyway he kills that one and the rest of them take him hostage and he's tied up there and they're gonna put a mask on his head and that's when cochran's like well tom atkins is like why are you doing this cocksucker and he's like uh the planets are aligned for it and i'm like what the fuck does that mean but uh <laughs> he tells him about stonehenge and he's like tom atkins uh, well, uh he's like you never believe how we got it here and he doesn't even say he doesn't even explain it <laughs> This is a way to like a cheesy line to cover up the fact that they have no idea how the fuck this character could have got this shit here. My <laughs> script feels like they were trying to come up with something new and blend stuff together so they could make a uh, decent non-Michael Myers movie. But it's kind of like they bit off more than they could chew and didn't know what to do with certain stuff and just kind of threw it in there. Like they were trying to get back to the Celtic darker origins of Halloween with the sacrifices and stuff like that. But it's like they couldn't form a, a coherent story around it. But uh, anyway... So Tom Atkins is there, they put him in a mask, they're going to let him watch the commercial. Halloween 2 is playing for a horror marathon before the big uh, giveaway starts with the commercial playing with a fucking flashing seizure pumpkin. Uh, one more day to Halloween. <laughs> and it's playing, Tom Atkins manages to kick the TV, knock it down, he gets loose. He goes around searching the factory, he's trying to find, uh, trying to find his squeeze. He's looking around for her. Um, uh, the androids go there, they uh, find that... Uh, uh, Tom Atkins has escaped. I should call him Sex Machine. Pretty much he's Sex Machine. Sex Machine's escaped. Um, <laughs> Hawksucker wants him found. Uh, Sex Machine manages to find his, uh, his, uh, fuck buddy. He releases her. I believe the character's name is Annie, but to be honest, she's so one-dimensional and has no, hardly any emotion whatsoever. I just call her fuck buddy, but I believe the character's name is Annie. Um, or something like that, similar, but I'm just gonna call her fuck buddy. This film's pretty forgettable. Uh, so he releases Fuck Buddy. Uh, uh, him and Fuck Buddy are... Sex Machine and Fuck Buddy are making it out of there. He grabs a bunch of... A box full of... Uh, the little... Uh, microchip things. Or the things with the microchips in them. And drops them down on the robots. And they all misfire and kill all the... Ro kill all the androids, I mean. And then... Uh, all at once, because he's got like the... Com he rigged the things down there where they play the commercial down there in the machine. And... Uh, some reason that causes like Stonehenge to activate and a big blue light like fucking shoots in the cocker and he's got a big smile on his face and he just turns white and just evaporates and I'm like what what the fuck happened he just disappears and I'm like because the commercial was playing Stonehenge got activated and zapped Cochrane and evaporated him what whatever <laughs> makes no fucking sense but before I forget before that they got they made Tom Atkins when they had him hostage they forced him to watch the uh, a demonstration of what the masks do <coughs> and what the commercial does to people. And they had that family in there, the fucking commercial plays, and the little kid dies, and you're like, shit, little kid died. This, this movie, this movie don't pussy around, I give it that. It plays it hardcore, which is pretty cool. Uh, the little kid dies, fucking snakes, and uh, shit start coming out of his uh, mouth or his head or something on the mask. Uh, the mom passes out in there, and the dad gets killed by the snakes, I believe. So it's like shit. This old fuck, this old cocksucker ain't fucking around. <laughs> but anyway, back to uh back to the part of the story that I was at near the end here. Old cocksucker's dead. Um, uh, sex machine and fuck buddy make it out of the factory. They get out of there. They're driving off in a car. The factory's blew up. It's burned down. Uh, they're heading out of there. Uh, and all at once, uh, fuck buddy it turns out she was an android too. And I'm like, what? And then why was she with him the entire time? And not even bothering to try to attack him. She was like, she wasn't just with him, she was helping him, basically. <laughs> or just going along with his plan. And I'm like, what? 
because all the androids are under control by cocksuckers. So I'm um, thinking, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> Don't make no damn sense. It's like they wanted a twist, but they couldn't think of any way to logically do the twist, so they just threw it in anyway. <laughs> So, well, you don't even know what happened to the real girl, whether she's dead, alive, or is it still at the factory, or what. So, <laughs> it's like, another what the fuck moment, but you get a cool scene where she's attacking him and he fucking knocks her head off with like a tire iron. It's pretty neat, and makeup effects are good, she falls over dead, he's killed her, and then he starts, her hand fucking grabs him by the throat, and he has to throw her arm, and he has to throw her arm out of the vehicle. And he finally manages to get out of there, he makes it to the same gas station that the dude at the beginning of the movie did. He's on the phone calling the stations and telling them to stop running the commercial. It's dangerous. And they're like, do you have any evidence? And he's no. He's like, just trust me. And they actually believe him. And they actually stop uh, running the commercial because, <laughs> just because he told them to. And that's kind of far-fetched right there. But I'll give it that. Um, but uh, he's still on there and there's still one more commercial plan. And you get the cheesiest ending ever where he's just yelling at the camera going, where he's just yelling going, the last commercial still playing. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. And all at once he turns around and looks at the... He looks directly at the camera. The end of the movie focuses directly on his face. Like... Like directly like that. And he's fucking... He just looks directly at the camera for the last shot and goes... Stop it! <laughs> it's so fucking cheesy and stupid. Oh, it just looks so retarded. And so cheesy. This is a weak film. This is not a good movie. It's pass. It's a passable low two-star movie. Uh, I had to force myself just a little bit to make it through this one. It's not bad enough to where I think that you would have to completely force yourself to make it through it, but it's bad enough to where you'd be watching it thinking, is this over? Is it over yet? Is it almost over? How much time has it got left? <laughs> I can kind of see why they went back to Michael Myers after this film, because this film sucks. It's not, well, it's borderline suckage. It's bad. It's a bad movie. It's not a good movie. It's borderline suckage. Um, I wouldn't say it sucks, and I wouldn't say it's horrible, but it's bad. It's, it's a bad movie. Um, even if you like, like, B-movies and stuff like that, like I do, uh, it's still not a very good movie. It has interesting ideas, androids mixed with witches and stuff, sci-fi mixed with, like, Celtic horror is, like, an interesting idea. But, uh, it's not really, you know, they never even explain, like, where the robots come from, like, cocksuckers in the movie, and he's talking to Tom Atkins, and he's telling him, like, uh, our, uh, <laughs> They're such good, oh, they're very obedient, and he, he's like, he never explains how he made them, or where they came from, or how he, <laughs> how the fuck he put them together. It's never explained whatsoever. So, you're, again, you're left with, what the fuck? <laughs> but anyway, it's a B movie, it's a low two stars, all came close to giving it one and a half, but I was generous with this one, just because Tom Atkins entertained me, because his character is such a shithead that he was just funny to watch. <laughs> I love to hate him because he was just so he was just so like upfront, like a, a womanizer that it was funny that I just couldn't help but laugh. <laughs> but anyway, this is not a very good movie. It's a low two star film. Uh, if you're a fan of Halloween movies of the Halloween franchise, skip this one. You're probably not going to give too much of a shit about it. If you know what, uh, make, uh, if you do watch it, make sure you know that this is not a Michael Myers movie going in. And um. Yeah, I'd say more if you're a fan of B-movies, I'd say watch this one. If you watch the Halloween films and uh, you like the first two and you're a fan of B-movies, then give it a shot. Um, you probably won't like it. I didn't like it. Um, it's a bad movie. It's not very good. Um, I really don't even think it's worth watching, but if you're into B-movies, I would say give it a watch and make your own decision about it, but I don't think it's a good movie. Even though it's something different, that doesn't make it good. They tried something different here. Maybe if the movie was better, we could have continued with the anthology idea. I'm fine with the anthology idea. I would have rather have seen that, honestly, than the sequels with Michael Myers. I like that idea better, but uh, a sucky film isn't going to make people want an anthology series. As a matter of fact, the Halloween name for this film probably helped this film, to be honest. I've heard that people say they think it hurt the film more than it helped, but this film would have tanked at the box office even worse than what it did without this title of Halloween 3. But, uh, yeah, the, the Halloween 3, uh, Season of the Witch. Season of the Witch is a cool title. I thought the film would be better than what it was. It was just more straight up about witches, and they took the robots and shit out. Even though I like that element, how it's mixed together, it's not, it doesn't gel completely because it's kind of left unexplained about where the android, androids, not robots, where they came from and everything. But, uh, yeah, this is not a very good movie. Um, 
Watch at your own peril. <laughs> Watch it if you're a fan of B-movies or just want to laugh at the ridiculousness of the main character played by Tom Atkins uh, in his womanizing ways. <laughs> but yeah, I'm looking forward to Halloween 4 because I remember it being pretty good and I already know it's much better than this film. So I'll see you guys again with a review for a much better movie. And um, I hope you guys have a happy Halloween when Halloween comes around. And I wouldn't recommend watching this one on Halloween. <laughs> I'll see you guys again with another review.